Hello and thank you for watching another edition of ARFCOM News. Hey kids, you want to be subversive and hack the machine with me? When you get to the end of this video, replay it and set your phone down while you go get a cup of coffee or polish your radon. That way YouTube will think you really, really like us. <laughs> you love me! You really love me! Even though you and I both know you just want something to look at while you sit on your thinking chair. This week we've got another thrilling installment in the saga of the Calistani Standard Capacity Magazine ban, a Missouri law that makes it legal to give guns to kids without their parents' consent, and 2 a sanctuary counties in Oregon. But before we get started, I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, I'll tell you about the simple home-crafted night vision products at TNDC.com, made by honest, hard-working Amish operators from fine mahogany and leather in the traditional fashion just like mom used to make. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor, TNVC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. As we reported last week, the evil warlock and known puppy kicker, Xavier Becerra, lost his defense of California Stan's standard capacity magazine ban. Unsurprisingly, he has requested an en banc hearing. By the way, I saw some gun nut dummy on YouTube last week refer to it as an end block hearing. <laughs> what a maroon. <laughs> Obviously has M1 Garens on his mind. Probably the kind of guy who has a safe full of lever action thudda thuddas and 38 revolvers. I would never make such a gaucho error myself, of course. Requesting an en banc or in bench hearing means the state is telling the court they think the three judge panel got it wrong and they want the full court to rule on the case. In practice, not every single one of the 29 judges will hear even an en banc case, so 10 randomly selected judges and the chief judge will make up an 11 judge panel. If the court grants an en banc hearing, that is. If the state is denied, that's it. Rounds complete, end of mission, the ruling of the three judge panel would stand and it would apply to every state within the Ninth Circuit, nullifying each of their magazine bans as well, though they will certainly contend their ban is different in some way, and they would still need to be dragged to court like a recalcitrant and privileged sorority girl on her 10th daiquiri. If the court does not grant the en banc hearing, it's like the state just reloaded their last save right before the boss fight to try again. But Bakera is also such a loser that he's lowering the difficulty setting as well by requesting the case be decided under the intermediate scrutiny standard rather than the strict scrutiny standard. The three judge panel rightly applied the strict scrutiny standard as they should in all cases regarding fundamental individual rights, but they noted the law would have still failed even if they had applied intermediate scrutiny. And I believe everyone who is remotely intellectually honest would agree. Strict scrutiny is indeed the appropriate standard, and the law doesn't even pass intermediate scrutiny. But I'm not a lawyer because my parents were married, and it's entirely possible that a majority of judges could decide to legislate from the bench. I haven't seen anyone out there making a credible case that the outcome is remotely certain, but I think our chances are pretty good on this one. Regardless of the outcome, the loser will likely appeal to SCOTUS, and then we start the whole thing over again. As police state enthusiasts continue their pressure for unconstitutional laws across the nation, folks in Umatilla, Columbia, Clatsop, and Coos Counties, Oregon will be able to vote on whether their county should become another 2A sanctuary county. If you don't live in a van down by the river, you are probably aware of the wave of sanctuary cities and counties that have been sprouting up across the country in reaction to state and federal overreach. While there are practically infinite ways to write a sanctuary statute, there's basically two kinds. One sort of statute declares gun laws to be unconstitutional and void. The other is to prohibit the use of resources within the relevant jurisdiction for enforcing these unconstitutional laws. The former is almost guaranteed to fail in court, which is why the Oregon Firearms Federation drafted a measure that conforms with the latter model and takes its cues from similar laws regarding police cooperation with federal immigration laws. The Associated Press quoted some random guy in opposition to the measures as saying, I support the Second Amendment, but I do not support the idea that anyone has the right to openly carry a loaded weapon anywhere that they want. Let's unpack that, shall we? 
Firstly, when someone transitions from one statement to another with the word but, it is almost always a total reversal of the first statement. For example, I support the First Amendment, but I do not support the idea that anyone has the right to actually worship in public. Or how about, I'm not normally into dudes, but Garen the Thumb is the sexiest man alive. In other words, this dude just said, I support the right of the people to bear arms, but I do not support the idea that anyone has the right to openly bear arms. Honestly, it's more than a little annoying that so-called journalists don't even ask a follow-up question because the appropriate response to such an un unintelligible statement is to simply laugh in their face and ask if they'd like to try again. I grew up on the coast, and I can tell you that it remains to this day an eclectic and fragmented mix of fishermen, loggers, hippies, and privileged elites. It's a beautiful place, and all the people are super friendly, just don't say anything remotely political. So it's anyone's guess how the ballot measure will fare, but if you want to do your part, you can start by donating to the Oregon Firearms Federation and at SanctuaryOrdinance.com. There are no politicians to pester for ballot measures, though. We have to change the minds of individual voters. We can do that by funding the organizations that are running campaign ads, like SanctuaryOrdinance.com and the OFF, but we can also do it by directly engaging with voters. So let's brigade the forums and socials and seek out discussions with folks who live in the area. Be sure to develop some compelling arguments that speak to the core values of the folks whose minds you wish to change. Repeating cliches about liberty and cold, dead hands won't change minds. Instead, talk with them about why you don't want the current administration to oppress minority gun owners, or that you don't want abusive husbands to file a red flag order to stop his wife from defending herself. Be like water. Y'all like guns, right? I, I think it's safe to assume that most of the people watching this video enjoy shooting or at least have a generally favorable feeling towards guns. So I think most of you don't have any problem with kids shooting in a safe and supervised setting. But how would you feel if someone gave a gun to your kid without your permission? I mean, I guess it depends on who it is, but I can at least understand why some people want it to be illegal to give a gun to a kid without the parent's permission. So when I read the headline, Misery Lawmakers Pass Bill Making It Legal to Give Guns to Kids Without Parents' Permission, it sounded like hyperbole. But that's literally what they did. It had been illegal to give a gun to a kid without the parent's permission before because apparently that's a thing that bangers do to avoid stacking charges. When they see the 5-0, they pass off their guns and drugs to minors who are nearby, knowing they won't be sentenced as severely. Governor Mike Parson asked the legislatrons in the Misery House to get tough on that sort of thing by making it more illegal allure, but they basically did the opposite. <laughs> the new legislation would only make it illegal to give a gun to a kid if your intent is to avoid arrest or investigation. Well, that sounds downright reasonable. And if you think about it, the old law might have allowed someone to prosecute perfectly well-meaning people even if the parents of the kid had no objection to their kid shooting. What if I sent my kids off to grandma's house for the weekend and she took them shooting? If she had asked, I would certainly have no objection, but if I understand this correctly, it still would have been illegal because she didn't obtain my consent beforehand. So, if you'd like to help this bill get passed, pause this video and go to senate.mo.gov to pick a senator and call him. Tell them you don't want grandma to be put in a cage for teaching her younglings how to shoot. As always, be polite and courteous. The person taking the call might not necessarily disagree with you, and even if they do, berating them won't change their mind. Remember last week we told you about how the mayor of Chicago, Beetlejuice, was blaming Mississippi for her own city's Mogadishu ambiance? Well, Mayor Beetlejuice is suing the ATF or rather, oligarch Michael Bloomberg is, anyway. Sure, it is Lightfoot's name on the filing, but every town is footing the bill. Still, great news, right? Well, kind of. I mean, as hard as it is to imagine Mayor Beetlejuice as championing civil rights litigation, she might just pull a sneaky on herself here. Let me unpack a little. The intent here is that Mayor Beetlejuice is basically just stamping her foot and throwing a tantrum about the 80% lowers. She's mad the ATF is letting people buy firearms on the internet. In case you didn't know, you can buy a roughly receiver-shaped block of aluminum 
that requires machining to finish into a firearm. Because it isn't a gun, until you make one, you don't need a background check, so it can be shipped directly to your home. It's always been legal to make guns at home, so long as you aren't doing it with the intent to sell them and you comply with the NFA rules, but the proliferation of 3D printing and desktop CNC has made it a lot easier for folks to make guns at home, even if they aren't experienced machinists. And of course, tyrants are always afraid of an armed populace. This is the part where it backfires on her, possibly in a way that is catastrophic and irrevocable to the way government defines firearms. For decades, the ATF has been arbitrarily considering the lower receiver of an AR-15 to be the receiver for legal purposes. But that's a tenuous interpretation of the definition because neither the upper nor the lower houses all of those parts. Sure, it is a rational argument that some part of the functioning gun has to be the receiver, but that's not what the law says. And looking further into it, you can name all sorts of guns where there isn't a single part that contains the hammer, firing mechanism, and the bolt or breech block. A 1911 frame doesn't. An AK does. So what happens if courts agree with Beetlejuice and tell the ATF they haven't been interpreting the law as strictly as they ought to? Is it possible for a gun to not have a receiver? Again, I'm not a lawyer, but it sounds like that might be the case. The law says what the law says, and it doesn't care how hard F Troop wishes it said something else. No matter what, this case has the potential to throw a hand grenade into the room, legally speaking. I'm very interested in seeing how this shakes out. If you work in the gun industry, you know it's that time of year. Yep, time to start preparing for shot. Yeah, I know, shot isn't until January, but registration is about to open, and for many vendors, their preparations for shot 2021 started the moment they got home from shot 2020. As of right now, it looks like it is a go at this station. Unless Sin City shuts down conventions altogether, SHOT is scheduled to take place, and that means that, the good lord willing, you'll get to see my pretty face there again. Or part of it, anyway. I don't know whether masks will be required, but Geisley is donating 250,000 of them to the show. Regardless of how you feel about government mandates for that sort of thing, I think that's a pretty classy move. You know who else is classy? Russell Fagan of KE Arms, and Ian McCollum and Carl Casarda of InRange TV. The KP-15 lower and the What Would Stoner Do Complete Rifle project are getting closer to completion. Russell showed off a pre-production sample to Recoil Magazine, and I must say it's looking nice. Looking nice? <laughs> no, wait a minute. I'm looking better than nice. I'm looking dangerous. Ow! Dangerous! On second thought, it's looking dangerous. I can't wait to get my hands on one. I am all in on this concept and have been since before the Anointed Ones came up with it. I bought a Cav Aid 2008 lower way back in, I don't know, it was so long ago I can't remember. I love that handy little sucker. I put a Rock River pencil thin upper on it to keep the weight down about as low as you can get with standard off the shelf components, but Ian and Carl designed a rifle from the ground up with an emphasis on weight, durability, and accuracy. They considered what Eugene Stoner, peace be upon him, intended with his original design and they speculated about what choices he might have made if he were designing the AR-15 with modern materials and techniques. The foundation of the WWSD rifle is the KP-15 polymer lower receiver, which is a revival of and improvement on the GWAX or CAV Arms polymer lowers. The original design was quite durable, as proven by InRange TV, but the improved design is even beefier in some important areas while adding useful features like a flared magazine well. Brownells has the KP-15 stripped lowers on pre-order right now for 90 bucks. That's not a bad deal for a regular stripped lower, but the one-piece all-polymer lowers have pistol grips and stocks built in. You can bet that I'll get my sticky little fingers on one as soon as I'm able. Well, weary traveler, that brings us to the end of this lonesome road. I hope you enjoy these things half as much as I enjoy making them. If you do, and you'd like to help us keep doing it, please consider replaying this video while you go off and do something useful. Or you could right-click a few of our other videos and open them in new tabs. If I entertain you, keep watching. If you think I suck, but you still want YouTube to show you more gun-related content, mute the tab and go back to work.
<laughs> I'm not kidding. It's Friday. Nobody, nobody does any real work today. But if you want to put in work on tangos in the dark, you're going to need some fine handcrafted night vision from our sponsor, TNVC.com. If you were frustrated because the premiere won't let you skip to the end for the secret word, well, you're a bad person. But you're here now. The secret phrase for the day is Jaffa Cree. The first person to post Jaffa Cree in the YouTube comments gets a free t-shirt. Thanks for sticking around to the bitter end. I love you.